Hey everyone, so I'm going to do the review sheet for your calculus test on Friday. Um, this re review sheet is all about derivatives basically, so please study your notes along with this review sheet. Okay, so let's get started. The first question says, what is the limit as h approaches 0 of cosecant pi over 4 plus h minus cosecant of pi over 4 over h equivalent to? Now, here's the deal. You should recognize that this is the limit definition of the der derivative. Now, what that is, is the limit as h approaches 0 as f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Here, you would plug in a function into here to find your derivative the long way. This is the real rule of how to find the derivative, which you know. What they did is they plugged in that function that they're trying to find the derivative of, and you got to find that function. Well, that function would exist right here. Or you can look at it right here, just that piece right there without the h. So the function that we have here is cosecant of pi over 4. And they're really just asking you to find the derivative of it without that way. You don't have to do the whole limit definition of the derivative. So to find f prime of x, you have to remember what the derivative of cosecant is. The derivative of a cosecant is negative cosecant. Keep the pi over 4 times cotangent of pi over 4. Now this question is going to require you to keep your answer, well make your answer an exact value, meaning no decimals and no rounding. So you can't just type this into your calculator, you gotta mess around with it first. The first thing I would say is rewrite this as cosecant negative 1 over sine of pi over 4 because that's what cosecant is, it's 1 over sine. And I'd write cotangent as 1 over tangent of pi over 4. you got to reduce the denominators. And you could do that with your calculator, but I would keep in mind to keep your calculator in radians because you're typing in a radian value. Um, I would also keep in mind that you're probably going to get a decimal value, but you should memorize your decimals from a while ago, which at the beginning of the year, I remember I told you radical 2 was 0 0.707. And... Radical 3 over 2 was 0.866, and you should know 0.5 is a half. So those are some things that you need to keep in mind. When you type in sine pi over 4, you get 0.707, a bunch of different numbers. You should know that that's radical 2 over 2. You type in tangent of pi over 4, that's nicely at 1. And the reason really why is because you're at 45 degrees at pi over 4, and tangent sine over cosine, so they divide to 1. So this is really just one. I don't really need that. And I'm going to take a look at this. And I'm going to keep the first thing, change it, and flip it. Leaving my answer as negative 2 over radical 2. Technically, you could rationalize this if you wanted to by multiplying by radical 2 over 2, making this negative 2 radical 2 over 2. These cancel, and your final answer is negative radical 2, all simplified. The next question says, identify where, if anywhere, that the derivative does not exist. So the first thing you need to do for if a derivative exists is you need to figure out continuity. You need to figure out if your derivative is continuous. Well, your function is continuous first. Doing that, you're going to take the left-hand limit. So you're going to take the limit as x approaches some number from the left. You're going to take the right-hand limit as a limit as x approaches some number from the right of this function. Now, if you analyze this, where could there possibly be a discontinuity? Well, x squared, you should know, is a parabola. That's nice. And x minus 4 is just a line. So the only place that we're probably going to have an issue is at x is greater than, or is great, less than or equal to 0 and x is greater than 0. Because this is where we got to figure out, does the left meet the right and do they fill in? Okay? We're going to find that out first. And if that does prove to be continuous... I'm then going to take the derivative, take the right-hand derivative and the left-hand derivative and see if they equal. But first, I need to have continuity. So I'm going to first see the, der the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. And then I'm going to see as it approaches 0 from the right. I'm going to do that by plugging the first one for the left. I get 0. And the next one, plugging 0 here from the right, and that gets me negative 4. 
because 0 does not equal negative 4, my function is discontinuous. And right away I can say, therefore, it is not differentiable. at 0, meaning you can't take the derivative. There is no derivative at 0. Now say these did equal, just as an FYI, if these did equal, you would then move on to taking the derivative of the left and the right and seeing if they equal when you plug in x, but because these did not equal right from the start, you are not continuous, so therefore you're not differentiable. Next question says, given the function y equals cosecant cubed of x squared, find y prime. The first thing I would do before I even start finding y prime is rewrite this trig function with the cube all on the outside. And that should be done for every single type of function like this, um, meaning that you can see this is a composition of functions, a function within a function, and this is going to require our chain rule. With the chain rule, you're going to take the derivative of the outside, then the next outside, then the next outside, and you keep on doing that until you get to the final step. So the outside of this function is the cubed. Then there's another piece here, and then there's another piece here. So I have one, two, three. Those are our pieces. So I'm going to bring three down to start my y prime, keep the inside, bring it down by a power, and then I'm going to continue the chain. The next piece of this is cosecant. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant times x squared. Keep the inside that's already there, times cotangent x squared. And then you're going to take the derivative of the inside of this piece right here, the final piece of your chain. And that's going to be just 2x, so times 2x. Now I want to simplify this out by realizing what I can multiply. Um, I can multiply the 3 and the 2x, and I can even multiply the negative 1 that exists here. So y prime equals negative 6x. So now I took care of all that stuff there. And then I'm going to look at my trig functions. I have this guy and this guy. Those are both cosecant x squared. How many do you have of them? You have three of them, so I can actually rewrite this as cosecant cubed of x squared. And then cotangent is itself, so I'm going to keep him by himself, and this is your derivative. All right, next question says, find the point on the curve where the tangent line is parallel to the line y equals 19x minus 6. Here's the deal. You have a parabola here. Actually, it would be upside down if I was doing this correctly, because it's negative. You want to find the point on this parabola that is parallel to the existing line, y equals 19x minus 6. So you want to find that point that creates a parallel line that is tangent to my parabola and also parallel to this line here. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to utilize my derivative. That's helpful because the derivative is equal to the slope. So I'm going to find that derivative and then set that derivative equal to the slope of this line so I make my lines parallel. Because remember, parallel lines have the same equal slopes. So that means that this slope is going to be set equal to 19 because that is the slope here. m is equal to 19. So I'm going to take the derivative of this guy here and I'm going to end up with negative 4x plus 3. And now I'm going to solve for x because I want to find the point on the curve. So I want an x comma y deal here. I'm going to work backwards to find x by subtracting 3. Negative 4x equals 16. Divide by negative 4. My x value is negative 4. That's going to go in here. Now you need to find your y value. How do you get your y value? Well, plug that x value you just found into the original. So I'm going to plug that x value into the original, and I get y equals negative 2 times negative 4 squared. plus 3 times negative 4. 
This becomes 16, 16 times a negative 2 is a negative 32, negative 32 plus a negative 12 is negative 44. And this is the point on the parabola that would be the point on the parabola that would have a line going through it that is parallel to the line that already exists. The next question says find the derivative of the following functions. So you have a bunch of functions here. You're going to have to think about quotient rule, product rule, trig rules, chain rules. So you have to think about all of them to make these problems work. The first thing I notice about this problem is that there are two functions here connected by multiplication, connected by a product. So basically we want to use the product rule because I have this piece here and this piece here. So you need to remember your product rule, which would be y prime is keep the first, take the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. So I'm going to keep the first. The first is this guy, 2x squared. Then I'm going to take the derivative of the second. Now the derivative of the second is going to be tricky because we need to rewrite him to the 1 half, which inside this product rule is a chain rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of this by bringing 1 half down, keeping the inside, Subtracting by a power of 1 is like subtracting by 2 over 2 in this case, would make it negative 1 half. Multiply the derivative of the inside, which is negative 1, because it's 2 minus x. Plus, keep the second, which is radical 2 minus x, and take the derivative of the first, which is 4x. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. On the first piece, the 2's can cancel and I'd be left with y prime equals negative x squared because these guys are outside all over radical 2 minus x. Now why did I put in the denominator? Well this power is negative and I made it a radical because it's to the 1 half power plus 4x radical 2 minus x and this is good enough as your final answer. Okay so the next question again is another product rule except this time we have tangent thrown in here, so we do have a trig rule inside of it as well. So what I'm going to do is first realize what is my first piece. My first piece is this, my second piece is that. So I'm going to keep the first, take the derivative of the second, which is secant squared x. Then I'm going to keep the second and take the derivative of the first, which is 5x to the fourth. I can rewrite this as x to the fifth secant squared x plus 5x to the fourth tan x. And that's your answer. All right, so the next question is a regular derivative, nothing really crazy except for the powers that are going to be really tricky. Um, so I'm going to take the derivative of this guy by doing it in pieces. There is no product rule. There is no quotient rule. And actually, I'm going to do one better with this. I'm going to rewrite it so that I avoid the possible quotient rule here. There's a possible quotient rule here because you're dividing. But this will make it an easier derivative by bringing that x cubed up from the denominator. Okay. So I'm going to bring down the 1 half, 2 times 1 half, x to the negative 1 half because you're bringing it down by a power of 1, minus 18x to the negative 4th, minus 2 times 3 over 2, x to the, if you subtract 2 over 2, you get 1 half. Okay, now I'm going to clean it up. These 2's cancel. I'm left with y prime equals 1 over the square root of x, because this is a negative exponent, so therefore it's going to go into the denominator. And then I'm going to have negative 18 over x to the fourth, because again a negative exponent goes in the denominator, minus the twos will cancel, 3, and that 1 half power will become the square root of x. Next question is again a trig function within a chain rule, so I'm going to rewrite it first with that power all the way on the outside. I'm going to take the derivative of the outside, which will bring down the 5 and bring it down by a power of 4. Now you need to remember your derivative cotangent. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So I'm going to have times negative cosecant squared of 3x cubed. And then you're going to take the derivative of the inside, which is that 3x cubed, and you're going to get 9x squared. 
Okay, so now you're going to clean a few things up. Keep in mind this is a negative 1 in front, so I can multiply the 5, the negative 1, and the 9, and get negative 45x squared. And then I'm going to rewrite cotangent with the fourth here, and then cosecant squared 3x cubed. That is your final answer. Okay, so the next question is a quotient rule. And the reason why I know it's a quotient rule is because I have a polynomial divided by a polynomial. What you need to remember for quotient rule is the derivative is equivalent to low derivative of the high minus high derivative of the low all over low squared. So I'm going to write the low, 2x plus 1, take the derivative of the high, which is 4x minus 3, minus high, which is going to be 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, derivative of the low, which is just 2, all over g squared, 2x plus 1 squared. You're going to have to do some cleaning up here. You can, it's easy, there's nothing really messy here, you're going to foil the first few, so 8x squared minus 6x and a positive 4x gets you negative 2x, and then minus 3. And I'm going to attribute this in with the negative. So I end up getting negative 4x squared plus 6x minus 2, all over 2x plus 1 squared. All right, so now the numerators can combine some like terms. This one and this one combine, and this one and this one combine, and this guy here and this guy here. So I get y prime equals 4x squared plus 4x minus 5 all over 2x plus 1 all squared. Okay, so the next question says using the table of values different the following. So you have to first differentiate these pieces and then we're going to look back at the table to get the answers. So I'm going to take the derivative of both of these. There are no quotient rules, no product rules in this because there's not anything that says a function times a function or a function divided by a function. So I'm just going to take the derivative of f of x would be f prime of x plus 2, take the derivative of g of x, g prime of x. They want x equals 3, so I'm now I'm going to plug in the 3 value. I'm going to look at my table to find these values. For this one, I'm going to look at f prime of 3. So 3 is here, f prime is there, so I get 4 plus 2 times g prime of 3, which is negative 1. So I get 4 minus 2, and your answer for this part is 2. I'm going to do the same thing for the next one, except the next one is a product rule, because you have this function times this function. So I'm going to keep the first function, take the derivative of the second function, plus the second function, take the derivative of the first function. Okay, and I'm just going to plug everything in for 2. So I'm going to rewrite this with the 2. So f of 2, g prime of 2, plus g of 2, f prime of 2. I'm look at my table again. So I'm look at 2. I'm going to look at f of 2. That's 5. And I'm going to multiply that by g prime of 2, which is negative 2, plus g of 2, which is 1, times f prime of 2, which is 3. I end up with negative 10 plus 3. That gets you a negative 7. Next one. Next one is actually a chain rule, because you can rewrite this function as f of x to the 1 half. So first I'm going to bring down the 1 half, have f of x make it negative one-half, and then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of f, because it's a chain rule, there's something inside here. Okay, so then I'm going to plug in the two values, so, oh, three, I'm sorry, so this is going to be three, so I have one-half f of three to the negative one-half times f prime of three. If I look at my chart, f of three is ten, so I have 1 half times 10 to the negative 1 half. And then for f prime of 3, I'm looking at my chart, and I have 4 for that. 
the 2 and the 4 cancel, giving that 2. And then I'll have 2. This is going to be in the denominator because it's negative exponent over radical 10. Okay. Now, technically, just so you know, you could reduce this, multiply the top and the bottom by radical 10, giving you 2 radical 10 over 10, and this reduces to 1 over 5, so radical 10 over 5 would be just as equivalent. The last one is a chain rule, because you have a function within a function. With the chain rule, you're going to take the derivative of the outside, so f prime is the derivative of the outside, but keep the inside, then take the derivative of the inside, which is g prime of x. And we're going to do this at 1, so f prime of g of 1 and g prime of 1. So look at my chart to find g of 1. g of 1 is 3. So what happens here is actually we're going to look at the chart twice for this section because now I have f prime of 3. But let's look at g prime of 1. g prime of 1 is negative 3. Okay, now I'm going to look at my chart again for f prime of 3. So f prime of 3 is 4. So I'm getting 4 times negative 3, which gives you a negative 12. Last question is a proof. I want you guys to prove the function, well, the derivative rule of secant, making secant equal to secant x times tangent of x. So what I would first do is rewrite secant as 1 over cos of x. And with the proof, usually you keep on writing it equal to secant, what it's supposed to be equal to. And then at the end, you put a check when the left side equals the right side. This is a quotient rule, the top and the bottom. So I'm going to keep the low, which is cos of x, take the derivative of the high. The derivative of 1 is 0, minus high, which is 1, derivative of the low, derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. All over low squared, which becomes cosine squared of x. This becomes 0, and then this becomes a positive sine of x. Equals secant of x, tangent of x. Now if you remember, when we did this, you can break up that cosine squared into cos of x times cos of x. And you just got to put sine with one of them. I'll put it with this one. And then a 1 would be here, because 1 times sine of x is sine of x. So if I realize something here, I should realize that 1 over cos is secant of x and sine over cosine is tangent of x. Therefore, your left side equals your right side and you have proved the derivative of, what did we start with? The derivative of secant of x. Okay, I hope this video helped. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Study hard for your test. Have a good night.